Hey guys, gals, friends, YouTube. Load Fly Helis here. We're back for part five of building the SIG something extra. Uh, last round we got the engine all mounted up. Now we got to cut the cowl and mount the switch and stuff for the electronics. I'm going to go ahead and mount the switch right now and I will wait on the receiver until we figure out where the battery goes. But um, I, I didn't film all this, but I made a bracket to put in here. And this is just balsa and a little thin piece of ply on top I cut out for my switch. The reason I'm mounting the switch on the inside of this is because this canopy comes off by magnetic. So it's real easy to just pop off. So I put my switch inside and that way I don't have to cut a hole in the side of the plane and make it look bad. Not that it looks bad, but just saves cutting holes in it. So uh, Anyway, I built this. I've already done that. And I made it to where it will hopefully get my wires out of the way here I had it in there once okay go down oh, there we go and then we're gonna mount it right in there underneath that tube just just behind it so I can reach the switch I'll set that in there oh, CA that down get it to set where I want it uh, actually you know what I gotta mount the switch in it first it'll be hard to Here, let me do that right quick um, be hard to get to the back of it so let's go ahead and mount it get this back down here we can see what I'm doing and if we ever get some decent weather soon hope to get this bird in the air but man nasty 15 mile hour winds and uh, rain, 100% chance of rain tonight and tomorrow. I'm supposed to get about 4 inches. Who knows? We haven't got to do much winter flying this year. Okay. Now, a little drill here. Drill some little holes in this plywood. Make sure I don't have my finger in the way. Okay, now on this switch there's a little plastic backing. Put the wires back through there. Slide that up over your switch. And then put your screws in. And you see now why I'm doing this before I mount this block. It would have been really hard to get that up in there and hold it in place. It's not too bad on the side when you're doing the side of a, a plane, but come on you little bugger. Get this silly screw started. There we go. This little better anchored down. Oh, come on. Didn't line up with my hole in the base. Get grief, why in the world? See, I don't get it. Drill that hole in there. It's a drilled crooked. Push on it. <laughs> it's not wanting to line up with my hole in the bottom. All right, we'll do this. We'll cheat. Water it out just a little bit. Well, why in the world is that not wanting to line up? There, finally caught. Goodness, I don't think it's ever going to take. And don't over tighten these, they will pull through that plastic head on the switch. So just tighten it down firm. Okay, now we're ready to stick it in the plane. Let's see. Uh, get it back down in there with the switch in it. Okay. What in the world? 
that went right in there earlier. Okay, let's start it. Let's start it under this side, get it into that throttle linkage. There we go. We'll get it just right, stick it straight down in there. Then when I get back here, I can rotate it. Now, I'm going to set this down to glue it in here. And we're going to use thin CA if I can. Gosh dang it. I can't get it to set up straight here. It's wanting to flop over on me. It's about to irritate me here. Okay. Keep my charge jack where I can get to it. That ought to work right there. Now, let me get my thin CA. <laughs> Why won't that come out of there? There. Okay. That um, glue that to the bottom. Let that set just a second. Put this back together. Okay. Now, got my switch right here where I can turn it on and off real easy. And I need to let my glue set. It's still trying to come loose on me. Put just a little bit more on that one side. And I'll drop my straight pin in my shoe. Okay, there. Get another one over here. Okay. There it is. One in my house, you know. He's hiding over in the corner here, but I got my, my good buddy Dale over here watching me. He's just started flying with us and got him a couple planes and he's doing real well on the buddy box. He's learning how to put these together. He hung out with me and Nate the other day too to work on Nate's plane. So I don't know if I'm teaching him anything good or not. <laughs> I'm wrestling this thing here, but. Okay, we got that in. Now, I'm gonna leave this open for now because I don't know, like I said, we'll mount the battery last after we get everything in it and get the wing on it. The book says mount it right here. That's all fine and good, hopefully. That's where it'll go. But if it ends up being a little bit nose heavy, uh, then I may have to put it down here underneath in this box underneath these servos right here. So I don't wanna put my switch there yet if the battery ends up going here, uh, no, I mean receiver, if the battery ends up going here, then I'll put my receiver right up here. If the battery goes here, then I'll make a little block right there for the receiver. Uh, I left room for my wing nuts right here on the inside. I can get to them above my switch, so I mounted it down low enough. So, so we're going to leave the receiver just kind of floating loose for right now. And, and that's the reason why, is because we don't know for sure where the battery's going to go. I will go ahead and plug it in in case we need to turn it on for some. And we'll just we'll just drop it down inside here for now out of the way. Okay. Now uh whew, back's hurting. And we're ready to mount the cow. Now obviously I'm gonna have to cut out a big groove in the bottom to go around the head. A little bit right here to go around the corner of the muffler. Other than that, the only thing I'll do is drill a hole right here for my uh, needle valve adjustment to stick out. And then the fill valve for the fuel will go on top. So, I'm going to get me a towel here. And 
I'm going to be cutting this fiberglass <coughs> with a disc. I highly recommend to wear a mask when you're doing this. This fiberglass is not good for you at all. If you breathe it in, it can damage your lungs and stuff. So, Dale, you want to hold it? I don't know. <laughs> I ain't got another mask. You may just want to hold your shirt over your face. Most of it will be right here. But we're going to start out cutting this right here. around the edges that's okay we'll smooth it up with a, a burr here in a little bit okay now get all that fiberglass off of here and right, let's see how close we are well, not too bad so far but I'm wondering if I can Uh, oh, I wish I could. Oh, look at that. There you go. Look at that. The muffler's going to come out below it. I don't even have to cut the side of it. That's awesome. Ha! Ah, love it. Okay. Wow, that's all I'm going to have to cut on this dude. Now, you'll notice I made me a mark here with my little red ruler. And I used the number one and the number five and the reason I did that and I drew me a line is because I know right where that dot that drill hole's got to be drilled so when I put the cowl on there I can lay this ruler on there drill my hole right there and I'm good to go so alright that's fitted now let me uh, change this out get my pliers out here alright come on Wow, that was easy. That's the easiest cow I've ever cut in my life. I love it. Most of them are really a pain. Okay. I'm keeping a towel over me to try to keep some of this fiberglass off my clothes. All we're going to do is just smooth this up. marks will come off all right I'm done with that let me get this thing off where I can breathe Ugh. okay your ink will come off of this with a paper towel and denatured alcohol so anywhere I used a sharpie marker to mark this but as you can see it just cleans off just as pretty as you please now I'll save that Let's try this one more time. I want to run my fuel. Well, this may be kind of fun. Get my fuel lined up in there. Wow, that is going to be. Oh. Uh, need your tweezers. Yeah, because I don't think it'll reach to put it up through there first and then. Get my needle nose. Try to get out of there and get it started. Okay, there we go. I want to make sure that the front of the cowl is not hitting against the engine. And it looks yeah, I believe it's going to clear it. You don't want it rubbing against the engine because the vibration will vibrate the cowl and cause uh, 
chipping and cracking so you want to be sure you get that right where you want it now let's see here cowl screws would be my tweezers out I can't get a hold of them there right there right there right there and right there now before I actually screw these in here, well, I'm going to drill the holes here in a minute, and then we'll back them back out. Let's see. Make sure everything is lined up, got it centered up. Can go forward just a hair. put a screw in it hold it in place okay now can't see me but I'm gonna do the other side and I'm doing that first because I want my green line to line up with the cow. I want to be careful there's a block of wood in this one but I want to be careful not go through too far because fuel tanks right inside there there is some space between the side of it but uh, <coughs> excuse me you go through too far and, and uh, you'll poke a hole in your fuel tank that, that's usually not a good thing. I got a whole drawer full of fuel tanks over here, but my luck, I wouldn't have the size that I need to fit this. So, and I never have drilled a hole in one. I know people that have, but I've never done it yet. But my time's coming, I'm sure. One of these days. All right, now we got those two top ones in. We got our green line lined up with the trim on the fuselage. Now, we can wiggle it up and down just a little bit. We'll get our hub centered right in the very center. And when I take this, no, it's clear. And I thought it was touching, but it's not. Man, that is just awesome. I can't believe it. all I had to cut on that. Okay. Now, I'm going to hold this in. Get my drill bit right in the center of the hole. Now, these screws are going into hardwood inside there, so it's not really necessary to put CA in them. They're they're tightening real tight without it. So, if it was a lighter wood, then yeah, you might. But okay, boy, well, the fun part is going to be putting that little adjustment knob in there. Hmm. I'm not real sure about that. I'll figure it out here in a minute. Let me get the other screw in here. Hold this in place. Now, my fuel fill, got this little plug, goes in that, boy it is a tight fit let me tell you, I'll have to get it on down in there, this tubing will stretch out a little bit after a while, 
but in the very beginning it's tight. Get that twisted just right. It's not fitting snug in there like I'd like for it to. Yeah, the vibration might make it pop up a little bit, but I usually use a little bit heavier tubing and it works real well. I thought this would fit good, but it's it's just a little too small. The vibration may make it work up. If it does, we'll change it later. See what we can do with it. I just wonder. I may have to change that. Put a heavier piece because that's going to be hard to get this in and out of here without pulling it loose. So we'll see about that when I take the cowl back off. Okay. Now I'm going to take my ruler and I'm going to Turn this right here, hopefully you can see what I'm doing. And I'm going to put my 5 inch mark right on that mark that I made. And my 1 inch will be right there. Hopefully that's where my thing will go through. A little bit bigger bit. I'm going to drill through this very carefully. Yeah, this is going to be fun. Getting this lined up. Can't tell if I'm hitting the hole. Hmm. I may have to get a new piece of cable. Anyway, that should be where it goes. Hopefully, if my my mark was on, <laughs> we'll see. I guess. Now let's get the black off of that. I got fingerprints all over, it's pretty smudgy right now, but okay. Now uh, I'm gonna get some pieces out here in just a second and I'll be right back and I'll show you what I'm gonna do to mount this cowl. Be back in just a minute. Okay, um what I do on my cows is I put a neoprene backed washer or a rubber backed washer. You can buy them already made up, uh, but when I'm out of them or can't get a hold of them, I just take a little flat washer, put a little bit of glue on there. I need to get me something to spread it with. So I get this tag here. Come on. Here, I'll use this. I want that to flow around that and then very gently put my washer on there. Let it set for a minute. We'll do another one, and these work very well. And it keeps from uh, cracking your fiberglass on your cow from vibration and stuff. So, just lay it on a. I lay mine on this block of wood so that it doesn't get on the table or on my fingers. I'll take a little piece of stick here and kind of spread it around. Okay. Well, squish the glue up on my finger on that one. Uh, after you glue these, you're going to want to let them set for a few minutes to to get good and firm. But this is actually cheaper just to make your own than it is to go buy them. But you can buy neoprene backed washers. Ah, come on. Let's slid that one off. Okay. 
I want them set for just a little bit and make sure there's no wet glue on your rubber washer part. It'll stick to your cow and pull the paint off. But that's how I make those when I mount my cows. And it uh, keeps them a lot neater and uh, keeps the vibration from cracking around those screw heads and stuff. So now, while them are setting, we're going to take the screws back out. By the time we get ready to put it back together, it'll be done. So, that was a full day. Ugh. Always eat too much meat. Me too. I have this thing finished by the end of the day. Then I'll be hoping for good weather. To do the maiden on it. I love this little plane. I flew one. Five or six years ago, a friend of mine had it. Oh man, it's fun. Very acrobatic, but lands like a baby. Probably floats in slower and easier than any plane I've ever landed. All right, we're gonna pull that off. And I'm gonna get my towel again. Clean the rest of this black ink off of here. Let's see how easy that comes off. Cool. Now, I'm gonna take my drill bit out of my drill and I'm going to poke it through this hole to see just how close I got and I'm off just a hair just a little too high somehow I got my measurement just a tiny bit off there we go So what I'm going to do is I'll have to wallow this out just a, a little bit with the drill on the cow, but that's okay. It actually probably better so it doesn't vibrate against it and crack it because that little cable will do the same thing. There, that'll work. Now, a lot of times I use one of these fuel probe or fuel guides for my cable to come out of, but I really can on this because it fits against this wood side of the fuselage right here. So I'll just have to let it come out the, the hole. Now, here's my problem. spring that out and get it around that. Alright, I gotta find my little bitty Allen wrench and I don't know if it's metric or ASC so we'll start with these. I can get to the set screw. That's it. I want to tighten that down on that cable. Now, I'm going to take this knob off right here. I'll have to hold that with a pair of pliers to keep from bending it. Okay. Now, I'm going to put my cow back on. I'm hoping I can spring this out and slide it over that and get it in that hole. Well, i got to do my fuel line first. So, let me get that up through there. Wait a matter of fact, wait a minute. I'm gonna, I'm gonna change that fuel line while I'm at it. I'm gonna put a piece of green. Oh, that's yellow. That's what I got. Get a piece of green. It'll match this. So let's cut a piece off. Now. What I'm going to have to do is splice it with a little piece of metal tubing. Let's see if I got some. There's a little piece of aluminum. I 
I'd rather use this brass if I can. Just don't know if I can fit that in there to cut it off. Um, yeah, I can get it. My little bitty miniature pipe cutter. That's what it is. <laughs> you haven't seen one of them? Yeah. It's a little bitty dude. And we'll cut that piece of brass tubing off. Come on. Should be getting close. I like the brass better than the aluminum for whatever reason. There we go. All right, now I'm gonna take a razor knife and just kind of deburr that gently. Okay, let's put this in the green one. Well, that's great. I just dropped it. Oh, it. A piece of, uh, let me find my tubing, I'll be right back. Okay, I cut me a new piece a little bit longer. Now, let's see. I'll probably have to use a pair of needle nose. I'm going to cut that off. Right there. And let me get my pliers. Let me get on this other side where you can kind of see what I'm doing. Now I've got the splice in there. Okay. Now that I got it started, I'll take my finger. This stuff fits really tight, so it'll be fine. There we go. Now that will work much, much better. Okay, now, let me take this. Get my cowl started. Find my tube, there it is. Okay, we'll pull that out. We'll pull the cowl out over this wire. Scoot it back. Get in a hole there. There we go. Okay. Now, what we're going to do is go ahead and get the screws back in it. All right, we got our washers all glued up. Only one of them stuck to the wood. So pop it off of there. There we go. Scrape the wood off of it. Now, I what I did with all my screws. Here they are. There's two of them. I lay them all over here now. I guess I did. Yeah, here they are. Okay. Now we're going to put one of them rubber backed washers on our screw. Let's go it in there. This also kind of serves sort of a lock washer here. We put pressure on it, it keeps it from backing out too. So. There you go. Do one over here. Well, you're putting in a rubber? Yeah, it's a rubber washer. Oh, yeah. And I just glue it to a, a metal washer oh, yeah. to make my own rubber back washers. You can buy neoprene back ones, but these are cheaper and they're easy, easy to do. So I just make my own. I just go to Lowe's and buy me a whole bunch of big old bag of little washers and a couple few bags of little rubber washers and make my own. It sure saves your cow. So, all right, we're going to squish that rubber just about halfway down and that'll serve as kind of a lock washer.
Okay. Time to fuel that. Well, this plug should go in this green easier than that yellow. The yellow I had was actually a gasoline line. And then when you push that down in there, it kind of wedges it. There. This looks like a looks like a fuel tank. Not your deal there. So then you just pull that out, fill it up, give her a little twist, stick it back down in there. There you go. See this tube holds it tighter. That yellow it would have come loose. Okay, now let's get to some goodies here. prop plan here will go somewhere Dale. Well, what in the world happened to it? just had it not too long ago there it is oh, I got my prop I painted this up white tips with green stripe but I think I'm gonna get me another one I didn't think about it until after I was done but instead of doing it like this I think I'm gonna bring the white on down to about where the green ends and then I'm going to tape it off and paint two little skinny green stripes across the white. It'll show up a lot better. But for now, this will do. Alright. I'm getting cluttered here on my bench. I'm going to have to clean it up in a minute. Get my camera back down here. Alright, we've got the spacers already on there for the back plate. This back, this uh, spinner is actually just slightly too big. It's a two and a half. I think a two would probably look better on here. I just don't have one right now, so I'll order one and uh, put a two inch on it, probably. Uh, it looks pretty good. It might not look too bad once I get it. I'll just have to see when I get it on there. Okay. Now, when you tighten these down, we're going to snug it just for a minute. Okay? Now we want to rotate this around, find where our compression line is. It's right there. I got it first try. I can't believe that. On a three blade prop, you want this to hit the top of your compression line where your tips are farthest away from the ground. If it's down here like that, if you have a dead stick landing, or even just landing, but, uh, well, landing it's spinning, but if you have a dead stick and you come in and you hit a little hard or you dip your front end down, it can snap that prop off. The wind will push this to the top of the compression line. So that's why we do it like this. We have more ground clearance. On a two blade prop, you'd want the prop almost horizontal. You don't want the tip of it down like this because you'll, especially wooden ones, you'll snap them off every time. So if you do a two blade prop, do it horizontal at the top of the compression line or at least close to that and then on a three blade do it where your blade is just like that right there I got lucky hit that one right on the first try which was unusual now I'm gonna cinch this on down try not to cut my hand because this prop is sharp on that trailing edge okay now We're going to screw that on there. Got that now. Sure that's all cinched down good. Now, well, this is great. My bolt just fell out of my prop. I'll go on it. Yeah. Out of my I had it laying here in the nose cone and it fell out somewhere. It'll be black uh, hex head. You gotta be kidding me. Okay, we found another one if it's long enough. And it's not long enough. Oh, let me go track down another. Okay, found a a uh, bolt that fit perfect. 
I thought that nose cone looked a little bit big, but I don't think it looks so bad after all. It'll be all right. So, and I got my three blade prop now. Okay, our, our high end needle adjustment sticking out right here. I'm gonna put that little knob back on. This is an extension you can buy at your hobby shops. Uh, I got mine at Tower Hobbies. That's where I buy most of my stuff like that. So and that opened up. Cables are kind of spread on me, so it's, oh, there we go. Get it back on there. Now I don't want it up against the cowl. We're going to cinch it down out closer to the end. My pliers. There you go, Dale. Get you to hold that. There we go. Now we've got an uh, extension sticking out here to adjust our carburetor. So, this engine has run great. It's been in my Spitfire for a few years or four years I guess five years I don't know maybe three or four uh, I do intend on changing this out to a OS GGT 10 glow gas engine it's a gas powered uh, with oil mixture but it runs it has a glow plug instead of a, a electronic ignition so on these smaller planes it works great it's an equivalent the 10 is equivalent to a OS 55 AX nitro engine as far as power the GGT 10 or uh, GGT 15 is equivalent to a 61 uh, engine I think so really nice that they come out with the, them for these smaller planes because it's hard to find room for the electronic emission plus you got the extra weight so it works all right uh, we are just about complete I'm gonna go get the wings and put on here and we're going to <coughs> excuse me we're going to stick the battery on here and decide where this thing balances at and we'll almost be done so I'll be back in just a minute okay guys uh, I actually forgot to turn the camera on a little go so I'm not sure I think I had the prop already on it and we uh, had to uh, mount the receiver we balanced it I ended up they, they showed to mount the battery right here well, because, probably because I used a heavier engine, this calls for a 46 to 55, I used a 62 V four stroke, so that's a heavier engine. So it made it, and plus it's a 16th of an inch more forward, I couldn't get it all the way back. So I had to mount the battery back here underneath, uh, I don't know if you can see this point or not, but I had to mount it back underneath the servos here. So then I mounted my receiver here where the battery was supposed to go and then my satellite receiver were back here where the antennas run in the opposite direction uh, and I will tighten up these wires here with some zip ties and stuff and my switch of course is inside so it will look a lot neater from the outside let me get the canopy put on it it's easy to turn the switch on and off since the canopy is magnetized alright we have balanced it the only thing I have left to do is uh, set the throws, but everything's at 100% right now, but uh, she's all ready to go. I got to get these little ink spots off here where I balanced it in the tape. I'm going to recheck my balance one more time, but uh, oh, I have to lateral balance it. I haven't done that yet. Lateral balance is not quite as important as front to aft but it is important especially on an acrobatic plane if you're doing rolls or any kind of spins and stuff it needs to be balanced perfect if it's heavier on one side like your left wings heavier than your right you do a barrel roll you may go smooth for the first couple of turns and then it'll start getting out around so that's because it's out of balance so it's it's important to lateral balance it and you hold uh, the front end you can put a piece of string around it up here uh, or you can hold well this props a little stiff so I'd put a string around here have my buddy hold a piece of string on the tail and we'll lift it up if one wing tips then I need to put weight in the right wing if it tips to the right I need to put weight in the tip of the left wing and what you do on that just cut a little tiny hole in the bottom and uh, 
put your weight, glue your weight in there to the wood. But to determine how much you need, you can um, you can just take a piece of sticky tape, double-sided sticky tape, and stick some weight out on the as far as you can out on the tip of the wing that's that's uh, light, and keep sticking. Anyway, it. okay, I'm sorry about that. My video card filled up in my camera, but um, I think I was talking about lateral balance. It's very important. Stick your Wait a quarter ounce at a time on the tip of your light wing until it bounces lateral and then cut a little hole in the bottom and uh, glue it inside and cover that back up. Now, uh, this plane would not balance at all, not even close, with uh, where they showed to put the battery. We had to, I don't know if you can see this or not, we had to cut a little hole in the belly right here and I had to put about five ounces of weight, maybe six ounces back there because uh, it was too nose heavy. Of course it's got a heavier engine than what we had and what it called for. So uh, anyway, she's all done. Uh, oh, all I got to do is clean off the ink here where I had my balance marks and uh, we will be ready for the maiden fly. Um, okay guys and gals, I decided to add one more segment to this. <coughs> uh, setting the throws uh, I didn't think about ever doing that before but for the new people um, that are building you might want to see how to do this there's there's a couple different ways um, you can you can use a ruler and set it on the table and note where your center mark is and then you know set it to whatever it says to in the book um, Matter of fact, let's get the book opened up. Uh, I'm right back. All right, low rates. Ailerons is seven eighths up and seven eighths down. So I use uh, this Great Plains throw meter. Uh, pretty inexpensive. I can't remember exactly how much. Uh, I don't know, maybe ten, twelve dollars, fifteen dollars, something like that. But it's got these little. Uh, spring-loaded foam padded cups and what you do is you put that over and it has it has millimeter on one side and inch on the other so we're going to use the inches obviously since they didn't give millimeter but you put it at your, your widest point and I'm going to try to get this set here where you can somewhat well that didn't that went well um so it's made to come apart for storage. Get that back down in there. Okay. Anyway, you set this. Leave about a quarter of an inch slack or space between the uh, control surface and. Uh, the meter. Now let's uh, let's see. Let me get this. Let me turn my radio on and power on the plane. Okay. I'm trying to trying to keep the camera on this, so bear with me here. Okay. Now uh, I've got my throw meter, and it's almost at zero. Get my radio out of the way here. Let me scoot this bottom one in just a little. Anyway, get your zero mark centered with your control surface, which is your aileron on this one. So, and the reason you want to leave a little space is so it will clear that meter when you work it up and down. Okay, now uh, this one calls for what did I say? Aileron seven eighths of an inch up on low rates. That's what we're going to set right now is low. So we're going to go into our radio and select dual rates. I'm running this plane on a JR9303 2.4. So go to aileron position one. All right. We know we have way too much. What do we say? Seven eighths. So seven eighths is right there. So let's. So we're going to turn this down 
until we get seven eighths. There we have it. Got seven eighths up, seven eighths down. Seven eighths up, seven eighths down. That's our low rate. Okay, we're gonna lock that in and then we're gonna go down to Expo and on JR uh, Spectrum you use Positive Expo on Futaba Tactic uh, I believe also um, on the high tech you use negative I think so anyway I'm gonna run it. I got 53 percent on uh, my low rates I don't want to go any lower than that if it was to get down around 35 or 40 then you'd want to change your servo arms and stuff and so you don't want to drop below that percentage so your servo will, will operate to its full potential so we're going to go um, oh, whoops. oh wait a minute I'm on the wrong deal here there's my expo alright we're going to go positive and we'll start out with about 21% on this alright now we're going to drop down to our high rates and on my JR I have three different switches I got elevator aileron and rudder and that's the way I like to run mine some people like them all on one switch now I just bumped that and got it off so I'm going to have to scoot that back in get my zero point again and you want to get it where you can look level across here that's pretty close, just a hair. All right, right there. Now, on high rates, we want to flip our switch to high rate, and then we're going to set one and three eighths inch up and down. So let's see what we got here now. All right, there's one and a, over one and a half. So we want to turn that down. Almost there, go back up just a little. Okay, one three eighths up, one three eighths down. Now, if I really wanted to 3D this thing, I can set my third rates even up higher, but that should be plenty. Uh, anyway, that's high rates. Well, here's the difference low, high, low, high. All right, now we're going to go in over to our, I got 88%. On high rates and it'll go up to 125 percent all right we're gonna go positive about oh I'm gonna start out like 39 percent we'll see how how that does all right now we're gonna go back up and switch to elevator okay now I'm gonna have to move uh, the plane <clears throat> and the radio so let me here this ought to work let me move my camera for just a minute um, make sure I don't roll the wheels off of the back side of the table over there my radio under there okay we're gonna set that right there and let's see if you can See that by chance. Almost needs to be a little bit higher up, doesn't it? All right, let's get our meter. And we're going to put it again at our widest point, which is this part right here uh, next to the tail. That's the widest point. I want to scoot that up until I get my zero lined up in the center. Leave about an eighth of a quarter of an inch an eighth to a quarter of an inch slack alright elevator alright it's clear and good we're on zero now elevator is on low rates it is one inch up and down so we want to see where we're at there that's at almost a one and three quarters so we're gonna go down till we get to one inch I recommend on most planes going setting these by what the book says 99 out of 100 of them is right and that's the best way to learn to fly it and then if you want to you know tune them in later up or down you can but get used to the airplane 
the way the manufacturer specifies to fly it first and get the feel of it because each plane flies different. All right, we got one inch up, one inch down. All right, now that's low rates. Now we're going to click over to our expo and we're going to go about the same, about 20. 23 all right now we're going down to high rates and high rate on elevator is one and a half up and one and a half down so we're gonna have to go positive on this because we're not quite there oh well, yeah we are let's see I'm gonna go a little over one and a half uh, but I'm used to flying these so I'm, I'm gonna Start out with just a little bit over one and three quarter and see how this thing does and then I can adjust it accordingly so uh, but uh, if you're new at flying very new at flying set it set it what the book calls for and get used to it on low rates first all right we got one and three quarter up one and three quarter down uh, now let's leave a little expo in that uh, oh, well. See, one three quarter, one, three quarter. Okay. All right, we're gonna go with about 45, 40. We're gonna go about 49 percent to start with on Expo. Okay. Now let's go to rudder and my rudder switch on low rates. All right, I will take my meter off again, and I don't know how well you guys are going to be able to see this on the rudder, but I'm going to attempt to put it at the widest point right down here. And it's not going to fit, so we're going to have to go up here to where it will fit. Now, this thing wants to slip a little bit so you gotta go move slow so I'll say I'm hitting it so I need to scoot it back oh, come on quit falling on me all right I got my zero lined up oops I'll have to scoot it in just a little my hinge line was hitting it Zero lined up. Still gonna hit it over here. Let me stand up a minute. All right, now make sure it clears my meter. There we go. I don't want to hit it and bump that. All right, rudder. Uh, right and left, one and five eighths. So we are a little over that. So let's, let's go down. I'm going to go down to about one and a half. I'm going to stand up to see this side. Just over one and a half on low rates. Now, set my expo. I'm at 81 and 85 percent. So we're going to go about 36 or so. It's 38. I'll go 38. Start right there. All right, now we're going to go to high rates. Flip my switch on high. And high rates is uh, on the rudder is two inches right or left on this particular plane. So let's see what we got. All right, we're going to have to go positive again. Now, at two inches, the rudder almost touches the inside edge of the aileron. I mean the aileron, the elevator. So what we want to do is we want to move that up and down and make sure it's going to clear that rudder. 
So I'm going to move that over just a couple notches. And that's that's that two inches, and that's just, that's all you're going to be able to get out of this thing. All right, let's go this side. Clear that. Make sure our elevator clears it. It does. So we're good. There's our. There's a difference in low and high, and then uh, elevator. There's a difference in low and high on that. That's quite a bit on the plane with this size throw. So okay, now it is completely done, ready to go. Uh, now if the weather will just break, we will get this thing out and do the maiden flight on it. Anyway, I hope the uh, hope any of this. Some of this maybe help some of you newbies out there building. And uh, if you have any questions, feel free to contact me. Uh, and anyway, we'll see you at the field sometime soon, I hope, for the maiden flight. Thanks for watching. Happy flying to you guys.